and I also uh, uh, can uh, direct it from uh, the web browser. So now I'm going to uh, make a go around. Uh, this eventually will be uh, uh, autonomous, but right now I, uh, I have these uh, commands to drive forward, to turn, to stop, and to turn left uh, with the stream of uh, what it's seeing. And so let's see. <laughs> ah. Okay. It's turning. And it's going. Oh, and then now it's turning. And go, 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 go. <laughs> and as it, it does that, uh, I look at the stream here. Um, so that's so far where it got to. Uh, eventually, I want, the, I want to access the robot and turn it on from anywhere uh, and see what's around. Cool. That's the robot. Yeah. How do you like it? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, cool. Yeah. So it's is it using the camera? I guess to right now it's recording and reacting to it fees on the camera. No, on right top. now it does not do that. Right now I. Uh, I uh, make it move around with the commands, uh, but that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to uh, to use what it's seeing with the camera to uh, decide on the movement. Cool stuff. Um, <laughs> yeah, does anyone have any questions they would like to ask? Anybody worked on something like this? Before. Uh, yes, this is the iRobot. It's it's like the Roomba, but not exactly. It's it's a different version that you can program. Yeah. I think it takes the, the presentation, and then the, I have some Roomba I create, which are like older hackable versions like this, and. Noisebridge just got a Samsung version of the Roomba, so uh, totally down to, to hack on these more with other folks and would, would like to have uh, something similar to that roaming around the uh, capture street. Yeah, this is called the yeah. iCreate 2, actually. Yeah. Cool. Definitely can use more um, robots in the space. I'm going to pull that. What do you? What is um? How do you program the um die robot? So I, um, I see the the way uh, the commands are for iRobot, and I use the library uh, that's called uh, PyCreate. Uh, that's how I started this with the PyCreate library. Okay. Python three. Yeah, that's that's what oh. I have so far. Uh, so, 
if anybody would like to work on it with me or have any suggestions or want to share uh, any code uh, how, how if they worked been, on it before. How long have you been working on it? Uh, I think like three months. Cool. Uh, are you familiar with the NoiseBridge wiki or Discuss? Uh, no. Well, have, have you ever used, uh, have you ever edited a wiki website before? Uh, no, I haven't. Okay. Well, if, if you go to noisebridge.net, the whole thing is an editable wiki. You can create an account on there and, and modify pages. So uh, we could, there, there's some robot pages on there and uh, could create one. Uh, to share ideas and things for your projects and we also have discuss.noisebridge.info which is kind of like a forum uh, where you could probably recruit some other people that are interested as well oh i see okay i'll look that i'll look into that thank you I have a question. Yeah. Um, thank you. Oh. Uh, I want to know if you have a name for your project, like a, a catchy project name, like Robot Super Robot 2021, or what? Does it need a name? I don't have a name right now, but that's a good idea. Yeah. I should get a name for it like that. Mars robot had the name that I didn't and know about it until today. Perseverance. And then I thought, oh, yeah. And then I thought, oh, me too. I got a robot too. <laughs> After what, seeing what the your, Perseverance. What, what was your name or preferred hacker handle? Sorry? Oh. Oh, is that something we do here? We choose a name. You, you, you can, you can, oh. you, you can sure, choose sure. a name. No, no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Di for you. Dinosaur. <laughs> you can name me dinosaur. Robot. Vacuum master dinosaur in the house. <laughs> yes. Well, I guess maybe we have a name for your, your robot project. Which one? Maybe. Some idea. But something like dinosaur. Dinobot. <laughs> Dinobot. Hey. Or what's yeah, hippo? What's your What's your favorite dinosaur? Uh, no, name it Hippo. Excellent the hippo choice. Bot. Hippo bot. Okay. Yes. okay. Uh, you got it. Because look at it. It's so big. Uh, but it's, it's very graceful when you put it in the water. No, maybe not so much. What, uh, do you spell hippo with one P or two P's? Two P's. Is it a standard? Two P's. Okay, it's a two P yeah. hippo. You got it. Hippo bot. I like it. Hmm. Hippo bot. No, just hippo bot. Hipplebot is the honey badger of iRobot Roomba bots. It does not care very much. Oh, oh I didn't know I was muted. P, two P's. Someone asked me if I wanted to uh, serve drinks. 
sure why not but but, for, but first i wanted to uh, move on its own So can we actually maybe would you take an, another question on the your your ambition for the vision processing part of it? Are you gonna do that on the Raspberry Pi, the Raspberry Pi GPU, yes. or what is your expectation for that level? What do you what's what's the most ambitious thing you expect from, from this? Uh, I expect that. A uses a uh, computer vision to know where it's going to not bump bump into things using the camera of the Raspberry Pi. Um, I'm not sure how to do that right now, but I think I get the stream uh, and with the stream find out if there's a clear path. Also, so I can use a sensor to see how far away things are before it turns uh, so I can do do that with us cameras with the, the camera and the sensor use the stream to uh, to navigate at the same time the the, uh, the create to the robot uh, has also sensors and it can navigate on its own because that's already built in I just need to program that but then the camera the in initial reason why I added the camera is to is for me to see so when I tell the robot the robot to um, uh, to cruise around I, uh, I can be uh, uh, checking out what it sees on the on the browser or on my phone so I can see what it's uh, where it's going so that's that's the main reason of the camera, it but it can like be used for that would, too. It would be very educational. Uh, I'm, I'm I'm guessing that are, are you, is this your first robot? Is this something where it's all like gears and and nuts and bolts? That it's interesting to you too to to make sure it all works. Um, or yeah, are you, this is. This is educational. I want to learn to program. So this is just uh, for me to learn all the parts. Yeah, 100% uh, uh, learning experience. Wunderbar. Thank you for excellent answers to uh, some uh, Next up, couple of questions. What's next? Hippobot. We saw it here first, and uh, look forward to seeing updates as you get a noise crew involved in this one. Um. Oh, one more thing. Do you ever, do you ever look at Remo TV? Is that still a thing? Uh, R E M O. Dot TV uh, is like a whole bunch of remote control robots. I don't know if it's still live, but it's an interesting thing um, oh. with uh, controlling robots with uh, camera and maybe speaker and microphone sometimes that will roll around other people's houses and you can, you know, look into them and, and control oh. them via the internet. So, I see, I there. see, remote TV. Cool, I'll check it out. Remo TV, okay, thank you. All right, does anyone have any other questions? Thanks everybody to nope. check out my uh, robot. Yeah, thank you for, for um, yeah, without, um, thank you so much. Um, it sounded like, um, yeah, great job. Um, and Corey, did you say you were up next?
Or do you want to present next? Uh, sure. Hello. Uh, hey. I'm happy to follow uh, Dino because I am also a robot. So I thought that would be an interesting looking in the body too. I would share some of my robot opportunity. Um, so if you're ready, you can. I got the flow. First of all, I want to show you guys some. Do you guys recognize what this is? My name might be bad. There we go. Um, I see more recognized. I can't turn it to make it more recognizable. Are you familiar with what that was? It's the noise bridge speaker from the big metal sign that I made. It's the only parts of it I have left. The knockout from the cutout. Anyways. Just thought I would share that. So I'm working on a bunch of robotic projects as well. Um, none of them uh, have a specific goal. I am working on a few uh, bits and pieces to make anything work at this point. Uh, uh, mainly motors and uh, motor controllers. Um, and uh, I can share what those are. Uh, but I can show you some of the bits and pieces that I wish I could have more control over my keyboard. Using my phone, not my favorite thing. So, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Let me double check that I'm on my Wi-Fi. I'm on my Wi-Fi. Okay. So, uh, um, yeah, I uh was excited to hear Dino's stuff and I wanted to let her know that there are other noise bridge nerds that work on robotics. I am one of them. So I thought I would share some of my robotics projects. Um I have a few in the works. Um uh I don't like to talk about my grand vision for a project before I've gotten to that point because then I lose incentive to do it. But I'll show you some of the things that I've been working on because I think they're fairly interesting. For example, um, here is a 3D printed tank tread that I've been using for robotics projects for a while. I actually designed this for a uh, class I was teaching. I was teaching kids how to program robots. And we were also designing the robots for 3D printing and laser cutting. So they, we didn't start with a kit. We started with materials and uh, Raspberry Pis and such. So the interesting thing about this is it's printed together. So it becomes pre, it comes pre-assembled once you print it. It doesn't print continuous. It prints in a spiral and a roll. Um, so you can snap it together and you can take it apart. You just wouldn't want to do that with like 180 uh pieces i can show you how they fit together um doo -doo -doo, there we go so if you can see the interface is uh two cylinders with two cones in the middle that keeps it uh, located so it doesn't slide apart um but also keeps it so it can articulate and pivot um it also gives it some I don't know if you can see that, but some sideways compliance, which is important for going over stuff. And then if we flip it around to the opposite side, perhaps you can see a similar feature, though it's probably harder to see if I get it in the light. There we go. You can see how it interfaces the other side. And of course, once you have a 3D printer, you just start printing miles and miles of stuff. Um, so I've got tons of it. Here are the wheels. I don't know. I guess that's showing up pretty well. Um, so if you look at the cross section of the individual components, you'll see that it's kind of a D shape. And then I don't know if I could show, I've got a purple one here. The purple one might be easier to see. You can see there's a kind of D shape in there as well. So they only work in one direction because they're not symmetrical. Um, but these are the the tread wheels. Uh, typical roller skate 
uh, uh, skateboard wheel bearing construction. And then for the drive side, the interface uh, RC car gears because they're cheap, they're ubiquitous, um, and they work. Um, so there's a bearing behind that. Uh, it's a smaller bearing, but um, so uh, the interesting things that I'm using to work on. I'm sorry, did someone say something? Oh, no. Okay. Um, so uh, some of the things I'm working with are these motors that I can get from China. Um, they're brushless motors that have their own motor controller built in. And they've got four wires that uh, provide power, um, PWM, and direction, if I'm remembering that correctly. So obviously, I've got too many of them. Uh, these are the motors that uh, pair with the gears. You can see that they're ready to go. Um, and what I've been using to actually talk to them, because I do intend on putting them on a Raspberry Pi, are uh, these little guys right here. Um, I don't know. I can't read because my eyes are old. What does that say? I forget what they're called. But they're a USB uh, ARM uh, M0 Arduino-ish thing. AT, are those AT Tiny eighty five uh, tiny Arduinos? No, no, no. There uh, are there are a number of uh, um, of Arduinos that are in that form factor uh, that are tinies. This, I believe, is ARM Cortex. I'm trying to see what it is. It's a it's a serpent. It's a serpente. Um, and I can't read the chip even with my my ugly specs. Let me see if I can get a closer look at the chip. Uh, nope, I'm not going to be able to read that. Um, but it's a Serpente version two. They're uh, an ARM chip of some sort. Um, uh, I did originally write it for uh, on an Arduino Uno, and the code ported over without any headache. So happy days for that. Um, but the reason uh, that's cool is because I don't have to have any uh, complicated motor controller or work with it. I just uh, write a little code, put it in a little PID loop, and say, give me this many RPM in this direction. Um, and that's uh, uh, as far as I've gotten with the motor control. But then you plug it into anything. It could be a laptop, could be a Raspberry Pi, um, anything with USB or with a couple of Arduinos attached to it somehow. Um, and going over serial. So um, those are projects I am currently working on. Um, I've got a larger project using the same setup. You can see I've got some worm and wheel gears. These are fun. So there's the wheel and there's the worm, if I can get it in frame. Um, but basically the same Arduino-ish solution would work on anything. And then to interface the gears, uh, the, the wheel gear, I printed a hub for these wheel, uh, uh, wheelchair, uh, wheels. So that is where those two projects are kind of colliding and they're kind of both at the same step. Um, I'm trying to find the smaller versions of the motors, but the company that makes this is, uh, what are they called? They're called, um, these motors are great. They're a brushless gear motor um, with their own motor controller built in. It's chihaimotors.cn, C-H-I-H-A-I motor.ca. I'm sorry, C-N, it's not Canada, it's China. Um, so they've got motors uh, of this variety of all types, and it's the easiest like motor setup I've had for a robot ever. Um, I guess that's about it for what I wanted to show. Uh, be fun to get the oh, it'd be fun to get the um, robotic Slack channel up and running again. Um, one more thing I'll show you. Here's a larger version of my tank tread. This is kind of my hello world for a new 3D print, uh, new 3D printer, because if the tolerances come out good, 
but this was printed on a 3D printer with a one and a half millimeter extruder nozzle. So my hello world had to be a little bit bigger as well. Anyways, that's it. Any questions? Uh, so funny thing about that, they're in SolidWorks. Um, and one of the things I want to do is uh, move them over to like open SCAD. Uh, and I haven't done it yet, but I'll tell you what the secret is. It's super simple. Uh, it's two cones in the middle facing opposite directions and two cylinders attached to them. And then you take that shape and you remove it from the other side. So if you wanted to jump into open SCAD and, and uh, model it up, you have my blessing. Uh, I can take uh, I can take pictures um, uh, and post them on Slack under robotics, so you guys can uh, make a high fidelity uh, facsimile. Cool. Sorry, um, in, I'm a little barbecue. Any more questions? Yeah. So um, the wheels. The wheels you built also meant to be. Oh, is that me? Um, are they meant to be? Are the wheels and the treads meant to work together? They are the they yellow wheels. Yeah, the yellow wheels and the purple wheels are meant to work together. Um, building that interface is a little bit more tricky uh, because it depends on um, your final result and its range of motion. Um, but I'll make I'll make cross section photos of the models, and you guys can take a look at what they look like. Um, also, interesting details about uh, the construction, which is useful for all three D printing craziness, is um, now nah, I'll send a cross section and explain it because it's too hard to explain in words. Uh, I'll just be clumsy and take a long time. Okay, what type of motors do you use? Yeah, they're uh, the brushless motors from Chi High. They're a brushless gear motor. They're a planetary gear set, which means they can handle a high torque load. And they're relatively efficient, and they're relatively quiet, and they're relatively robust. Um, the company is C-H-I-H-A-I motor dot C-N. And uh, I've ordered directly from them um they have no problem doing onesie twosies they also sell other kinds of motors uh normal dc brush motors and stepper motors and all that but the unique ones that i've just found are so easy to use are their brushless gear motors since the motor controller is right there and you don't have to do anything except give it uh a pwm a pwm value and a uh and a direction Oh, oh, there's do the wheels no the wheels spin in both directions um so the wheels spin in both directions however because the uh cross section of, of the tank tread is asymmetric they have to mate with the wheels in a specific direction um let me without showing you the cross section you might be able to see that one side is round and one side is vertical. Uh, so it's like there's a hook. Um, and uh, that gets into, um, it gives very positive, um, uh, very positive connection, mechanical connection with the uh, tank tread uh, because it really gets in there and pushes it along. Um, so slippage is uh, almost impossible. Um, but yeah, um, the funny story about this set of tank treads and wheels is I was teaching a robotics class at a tech shop and, um, the person who ordered the tank treads that we were going to use to me as, to me as a, a model company, we were going to use their tank treads that they have for the robotics kits. And he ordered them from China. Uh, and they were about weeks away and I was in the middle of my class. 
So at one o'clock in the morning, I had a fever dream. Uh, woke up, designed it in SolidWorks, and uh, by the morning, I had printed a solution out. Um, I love those inspiring fever dreams. We get them too infrequently. Um, but that's it. Any more questions? Very inspiring stuff. Cool. Thank you. Um, you still teach the robotics classes? Oh, uh, I teach a first class. Uh, first robotics um, is an international competition. Um, it uh, allows teams to have the same kind of competitive spirit as um, you might have for basketball or baseball or football, except with something a little bit more academic. And one of the cool things about the organization is they have a lot of opportunity for people who are inclined or electronics inclined or software inclined to participate because it's basically like teaching kids how to run a business and project manage. So everyone learns how to become a project manager. Um, and everyone learns how to play a part in a larger team and uh, running a company. So it's kind of a very cool uh, organization. I teach that. Um, I ha have taught the robotics class again, uh, but I would need to get a number of people together. And it's the class is hard without access to 3D printers and laser cutters because one of the things about the class was uh, we didn't have a kit. We made everything. So, um, yeah, that's kind of uh, a problem for that class, and it's been hard to continue in the era of COVID. <sighs> All right, well, I will cede the floor. Cool, nice print. Yeah, thank you so much. Totally. Yeah. Um, all right. So, wait, really, are you recording right now? Oh, no, it's, it's good. Um, I was, oh man. Okay. Um, yeah, no, no, no. I, I have, I was going to present, um, something real quick, but, um, yeah, basically I, it's a little, yeah, I'd like to get some, I was going to share my screen, um, and doing that in recording might be challenging. Um, but yeah, I can, but yeah, I can, I can start. Um, yeah, so hey guys, I, um, basically I wanted to, I guess in, um, because of the robotics, I guess robotics day and the, uh, Mars lander that mission that land there, sorry, the Mars lander that just landed on Mars, um, I wanted to do a thing on training a lunar lander robot. Um, so I'm going to just kind of give a background real quick. Um, so let me share the screen. Um, so yeah, basically I um, did, I trained a lunar lander robot um, using something called Q learning and specifically double deep Q learning. Um, and you may ask like, what is this lunar lander? Um, it's actually a soft, it's actually I think um, a kind of a simulation environment called OpenAI Gym. Um, and we'll see it in a moment, but essentially you're a lunar lander, um, and you 
the lunar lander state, you see the little purple thing. It's defined by its x, y um, in this 2D, um, I guess, platformer style plane. Uh, then the theta is the angle of the robot. Um, then you have some velocity values um, and then some flags if um, the left or right leg is touching the ground. Uh, and with that, the robot can do one of four things. It can do nothing. Um, it can fire one of its orientation thrusters, um, which you see in this photo. It's firing um, some thrusters off to the left and right, um, which help basically, uh, which help basically kind of tilt it toward the center. Um, or you can fire the main engine, um, which is sort of help propels it upward. Um, there's a series of landing cri of criteria. Basically, um, it helps to land and not crash. Um, I won't go too much into the specifics of Q learning, um, but it's basically uh, you take you start you figure out um, the sort of the expected value or the the like how you sort of score um, each action at a given state where the state is sort of where you are and the action is what you do. <clears throat> and if you just iterate this a bunch of times, you actually get like the correct score. Uh, the, the hard part about it is you don't in this case, say you have a bunch of slot machines, which they're calling all in our bandits. Um, and each has a different payout that you don't know. Um, the dilemma here is which, um, which, which arm should you pull? Obviously, you have to explore each of the arms and figure out their payouts. Get the explore, you have to like hit the arm enough times to figure out its payout. But um, the less, I guess, the more you do that, the less you'll get, you'll be able to get the reward from the slot machine that pays out the most. So a lot of one way to compromise is sort of do it. Um, yeah, basically, Try, try and exploit a given slot, like whatever is high, whatever is paying the highest, um, but randomly try something else uh, occasionally. Um, there's, let's, uh, so one way to start with this problem um, is one way to do reinforcement learning, um, some practical details is you start with a pretty simple problem. In this case, I started with cart pull, um, which is just basically balancing a stick on a cart, um, basically moving the cart so the stick remains balanced on it. Um, the second is you do things, instead of just updating the Q value based on every step you take or every action you take, you do a bunch of runs and then run it on a batch of those runs. Um, third, instead of trying to have a huge table, um, for which in this case, because it's continuous is impossible, just use a neural network from the input to the to score the, each of the actions. Um, and then there's a factor that you decay for exploration and exploitation. Um, yeah, so let me unshare this and I will show you an example of, I'll show you an example of this in action. So I created, I trained, um, I did some training. on on this on this thing uh 
and I'll show you, see how it, how it goes. Um, it might be a little slow because of all the um, screen sharing and such. Hold on. Um, there it is. But yeah, what you'll see is a, after some training, you actually see, so the, what you can see here is it's using the main engine to sort of slow itself down um, because if it runs into the ground too quickly, it'll start crashing. Um, uh, it also uh, will fire orientation thrusters so it can then turn. If it goes off center, it will turn back to center. Uh, So while this thing is while I, while you can, while this thing is running, um, I kind of want to talk about one factor or one variable that I tuned, uh, which had a really interesting result. So there's this thing called gamma, um, and what that factor is is essentially how far forward you look into the future. And so the higher the value of gamma is the more the robot or more this lunar lander will see and will look into the future to determine its actions. Um, so a low value of gamma is a very short-sighted robot. Um, whereas uh, um, a, a very high gamma is a very, very cautious robot. Um, so this one is a gamma value of 0.99. And I'll show you real, real quick. Um, what happens in this particular case, if you lower the gamma, is it actually preserves, it, it prioritizes um, saving fuel um, over landing. And so what it'll do is it'll start swinging back and forth. Um, so let me show you. Um, Yeah, let me close this and I'll show you a little example of this in action. So you'll notice um, that this robot, rather than kind of gently go coming to the ground, um, this will actually, huh? Yeah, sorry, I'm loading. Yeah, it's it's rendering right now. So here you'll actually see the robot is tilting to its side and using the less, um, the more cost-effective, um, the more cost-effective orient side orientation thrusters. Now this is not, mind you, this is not an optimal solution. It's a very dangerous, as you can see. Um, it ends up crashing once it gets to the ground. But you can see how it sort of um, manages to save a lot of fuel um, and get to the ground much more quickly. Uh, this one's. Yeah. Yeah. So it learned, it learned because it's more, this is a more short sighted robot. It learns to save. It learns to land, save fuel when landing. So it's using its orientation thrusters instead of the main engine. Um, because the orientation thrusters actually require um, less maintenance, or it's less. It costs less to use the orientation thrusters. So you'll see in each Sorry? Um, 
Um, so let's see. So in order to increase, so the state is those those variables I showed you before. Uh, let me close out of this. Um, but I guess I can just sort of flip it to here. Um, so the state is three variables. Uh, right now it's three variables and then the, um, I guess the velocity of those or like the rate of those, the change of those with respect to time. Um, if you want to do it in 3D, uh, you would now have, I guess, a Z value. You would have... Let's say the yaw doesn't particularly. Let's say you're you're not using yaw. Um, so let's just add one angle value. I, I think you actually would need two. Um, let's say you don't. So now you have dz dt and d psi dt. And now your state. Um, and I assume you're talking about instead of just a left and right orientation thruster, you would have like a left, right, front, back. So I think the short answer to your question is it would, it's doable. Yes, it would require more, it would require a few more variables and therefore more training. Um, but it would just be a matter of stepping up um like adding a few states um and in a few actions yeah um does anyone have else have any questions yeah i do how um this is corey uh, how uh, is this rendered in real time, or are you planning it out and then rendering it after the fact? Um, that was in real time. Okay. Um, how how uh, processor intensive is it? Yeah. This this is a pretty lightweight neural network. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in terms of in terms of what I'm running right now, it's pretty light. Um, the only reason it's a little bit slow right now is because I'm screen, I was screen sharing on Jitsi. Uh, otherwise, it's it's pretty um, light. It's pretty light. The inference part is light. The um, main difficulty is in training, which does take a few hours. Um, so training it to do that um starting from random actions takes a while um that's more that's more um uh, i guess not being i could probably do it in an efficient way with python um or than what i'm doing right now um because basically i'm just playing i'm just using a python loop to play the game uh and so you could probably speed up the training. So yeah, it it this it is not it would, it does work in real time. Um, the neural network can be done in real time pretty easily. Um, the sort of the hard crunching, the number crunching was sort of figured out by the robot or figured out by the neural network um, over a bunch of iterations. So I ran it for fifteen hundred um, episodes, where each episode is. Um, where you saw the the lander coming from top to bottom. So each each try is an episode, and I ran it for fifteen hundred of those. Do you think something uh, like that could be run on a Raspberry Pi? Uh, yeah, it's. I would think with training, um, just because. I think training you should do on, you should probably do on something like a CPU. Um, but 
like inference, yeah, it, it probably could be done on a Raspberry Pi. Um, so the neural network is is like two layers. It's like two um, fully connected layers, um, which is a pretty small neural network. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, no worries. Uh, TJ, and my my life, my Conway's game of life is completely symmetrical. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. Oh, the lights. Not anymore. Oh man. Sorry, someone's about to ask a question. Okay. Someone about to ask a question. Oh yeah, yeah. TJ, uh, is this um uh, when you, when you're doing this? What do you mean by the points to win is are you making um, a competition with your uh, lun lunar lander yeah so let me kind of show you let me give you a link um, that sort of shows that kind of shows it in real that sort of like shows the thing running in real time um but it's this it's a sim environment called open ai gym um and it is sort of a it's it's built like a game um i don't think there's like an official competition um but it's just to it's just a challenge for like training a neural network so on the main website you see the lunar and lander and um basically a random agent on it i see that's cool it sort of describes how the how the game works okay that's nice to uh i'll probably try it out cool thing yeah no worries Yeah. Yeah. You could. Yeah, I think there have been like self things that learn to balance itself, um, like hovercraft that that have learned to balance stuff, balance itself, um, where you just, I guess you you kind of reward, you know, you reward it for staying afloat. And penalize it for crashing and it eventually learns to it learns the um learns the actions you need to take to for it to balance itself yeah exactly yeah um one advantage um, so one advantage that this I would say that the biggest challenge is one advantage this this simulation has is that the action is the actions are discrete um, in that you either turn on you either turn on the the engine at full speed or you or it's off um, and you know so there's only four things you can do um like fire orientation or well, the orientation thrusters the main engine or do nothing and so uh
Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's just on or off. Um, and the advantage that that gives you is that you can sort of determine the Q value um, or the um, expected value of each action. So you can predict that with a, like an easy neural, neural network since that's only, you only need to figure, figure out the values of four actions. Um, whereas if it's continuous, um, you have to actually divide it up into like, you know, 0%, 10%, 20%, 30%, and so on. Um, and that's, then that's, that's even if you discretize it to a fraction of 10, it could be like the optimal value is 25%. So you need to divide it into fives or so on and so forth. Um, and that's one thing I wanted to look up next is what happens when, sorry, when the action space is non, um, triv is, I guess, non-trivial. Um, so like if the action space is continuous, um, like I just mentioned, uh, or there's just so many, uh, different actions that you could take, say if it's like a, like a magic to gathering or some some like more complex game which has a lot of different actions you can take right you can add yeah you can add wind speed so yeah i think there's a couple so yeah, that's also a thing is like state space. If the state space gets really big, um, yeah, that could also, um, that means you have more variables to, to work with. Yeah. Um, got you. Um, if, if no one has any more questions, um, or sorry, I have I would open the questions. yeah. Yeah, so it seems like these are games that come with uh, OpenAI Gym. So they don't have to run in real time, I guess. When it's taking its, uh, when it's training itself, it's running at a higher speed. Is that correct? Um, it, it's running at, at real. It can run at, at the same speed. Um, oh, okay. it's, so, like, it's it's doing it's doing the calculations. So it's, what it's doing during training is it's it is running it, um, and then it, after a few runs, it looks back and says like, um, "Where did I go wrong? What actions could be better?" Um, and then it on itself. So are the only games it plays the ones that uh, come with the package? Or um, how, how does it get uh, inputs and outputs from outside of itself? Yeah. So, yeah, this one is, this particular one is trained on, on the particular game, being Lunar Lander. Um, and it takes, um, it takes the input state. Um, which is like the X, Y, the angle, its orientation, um, its speed, um, and a couple extra flags. Um, if like one of the legs touching the ground, and it puts that through like a series of calculations um, in the neural network, um, and then outputs um, the value of each act. Like, so there are four actions you can take. Is the value of each action. Mm -hmm. So the the theory could be applied um, to a lot of things with a continuous space input and a discrete output. Say if you're like the example I, I made earlier um, that drove that tried to uh, try to balance a pole on it, mm -hmm. and you just you you kind of move the cart left and right so the the pole remains balanced. Um, same idea, you you have an action of going left or right. Um, the state is the orient the position of the cart and the orientation of the pole. Cool. So um, they have examples of both 
obviously playing the game, but also examples of um, interfacing actual hardware. Sorry? The um, so uh, do they have examples of both not just playing the games, which I see from their website, but examples of people using it to control actual hardware? Uh, I'm just looking for, like, the the path of learning from, like, playing a video game that's bundled with the open AI gym and then translating that to uh, real hardware. Is that a, is that a designed transition? Is there like a, a, a path? Like if I'm developing curriculum or trying to teach kids, um, is there a way to get from the baby steps of playing a video game? Um, yeah. um, so I would look up, there's actually a bunch of people who've done I talked about the card pull problem. Um, there's a bunch of people who've done like real life versions of that. They actually use a card to balance a pole on it. Um, let me see if I can find. So a lot, I think a lot of these are demos. Um, I can get back to you on on like on. Oh, no, it says, yeah, I think the one I gave you shows. Uh, oops, sorry. Yeah, it shows you, like, basically doing the car pull problem on a real Raspberry, a Raspberry Pi um, with a real robot. Cool. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to take a look at that and see if I can teach myself and then teach kids. <laughs> Yeah, um, and I can show you the OpenAI gym version. Um, hmm. Maybe it's V1. Oh, they don't have any cool pictures. Um, anyway, but yeah, I can, here, let me show a link. Here. That's the yeah. Sorry, that that was it. I wanted to share that link. Does anyone have any other questions? Yeah, I can I can attempt to. Uh, my my internet's a bit dodgy at the moment, and uh, it's. Uh, an NAV presentation, but I can share a direct link if it doesn't play back smoothly. Um, so I guess I'll go. Uh, hey, everybody. Good to see uh, folks in the Hackatorium and uh, around for some five moth. I can definitely not confirm being in uh, the process of creating yet another hacker space in and around the Bay Area. Um, but that's not maybe that that's a talk for next month. Uh, this month, I want to talk about um, my morning in which my phone rings with some random phone number from New Jersey. And I answer it. And this nice lady goes, is this noise bridge? And so, you know, of course, my usual response, sure. Um, and uh, in case you didn't know, noise bridge has a minimal presence on Facebook, which also has a phone number, which is not my phone number, but does get redirected to me on occasion automatically. Uh, and, uh, they wanted to know if they could talk to somebody about hacking Facebook. And, uh, I, I, I gave them kind of the, the usual, you know, that's not the sort of thing that we do here. And we tell people to move along, although we are big advocates of, uh, privacy and anonymity online. So talking about all the wonderful reasons why people shouldn't use Facebook and the best thing and safest thing to do is delete Facebook. Uh, I, I did give them um, some background on a story that they were developing. So, uh, also, yeah, this was uh, between watching 
the Mars landing and bidding on auctions, uh, did a, a Zoom call, and uh, that resulted in this. So let's see if this works. I'm going to play a, a two-minute clip. Um, I, I won't be able to see the chat, but somebody try to, to butt in and let me know if you can't hear anything or it's sucking too much. Um, do you guys see a, a screen with some dude looking at you? Okay. Yeah, well, I'll send you a higher quality link, but uh, let's see if this works at all. Being put on administrative leave, this followed his wife being accused of making racist comments on ABC4's Facebook page about George Floyd back in May of 2020. ABC4 Northern Utah correspondent Jordan Verdadero reports. It's Officer Michael Criddle's second day back at work after his wife Amber was accused of making racist comments on Facebook back in May. It's been difficult, you know, to look at what our family has gone through and suffered. Criddle immediately faced backlash from the community and described the past eight months as a living hell. We moved, we changed phone numbers, and through the eight months really just kind of, you know, sat in depression and anxiety waiting for the truth to come out. My wife's anxiety went through the roof and depression. Uh, she was also put on leave. Investigators identified a suspect that allegedly created a fake account under Amber's name using her photos. The investigation found the suspect did this to numerous other people they had conflicts with over the last several years. His career was on the line with this essentially. And, um, but, you know, I don't know that there is a dirtier word in law enforcement than racism. We did a test and opened up a Facebook account and found just how simple it is to pose as another person. Facebook actually tells you to use the name that you go by. They, they will be like, oh, that name seems fake. You can't use it. Use your real name. But if you use any real name, anybody else's real name, uh, they really don't validate it. X is a professional hacker now working for a nonprofit, NoiseBridge, that helps people understand technology. He says the best way to prevent something like this from happening is to use a two-factor authentication or keep your photos and true identity completely off social media. As, as a society, we need to not be so quick to judge. Criddle says he hopes through this investigation he can earn back the trust from his community. That suspect is now under a separate investigation. Reporting in Kaysville, Jordan Verdadero, ABC4 News. Good job, X. <laughs> cool. Well, awesome. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's funny. Occasionally, uh, I'm hanging around Noise Bridge and some reporters show up. This was the uh, first time I've, I've, I've given an inter interview across state lines. Welcome back and interesting with us. Oh. I'm Emily Clark. And I'm Rick Air. Um, but yeah, I, I, I hope you feel like uh, I, I represented reasonably well. Obviously, it's kind of a fucked up story to start with and wasn't, um, yeah, didn't really want to get into it and, and drag into other things, but uh, thought it was, uh, you, you can't change the conversation without engaging in the conversation, as they say. Um, but uh, yeah, Noise Bridge, apparently the go-to for background on uh, Facebook hacking. Yeah, the um, the person doing the story um, was is funny because I was like, this is a weird troll because the number I got was from New Jersey and the news station is in Salt Lake. But I actually checked them out and they just started in February and lived in the East Coast. So it was like... Uh, legit dots but also like yeah it's funny you're you're researching an identity theft um story and you call a hacker on your personal cell phone number uh to start the conversation was uh, a pretty good wolves um so they might come hang out and visit and uh learn more about all these fun such things So they're based out of Salt Lake, you said? Or yeah, it's ABC4 News, Salt Lake City. 
All right, cool. Yeah. Which so apparently as they were talking about um somebody posted some smack on ABC four news Facebook page and uh it was it was a, a, a troll um that uh got some uh some blue life folks in uh some hot water but uh yeah apparently the person that was doing this has had been doing it for a while and sounds like there was some Facebook subpoenas involved and they were able to uh yeah I didn't I gave them like 20 minutes of background obviously the whole thing was a two minute story but uh amateur hour on all sides good times Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah and I gave you know, them. Like, they, of course, I gave them. You're kind of becoming. A, uh, oh. Yeah, I was, was going to say you're you're kind of becoming the uh, the the noise bridge media representative these days because I I still have the link to the video that when they when they when the local CBS came over to uh, talk about our having to move and uh, fundraise right and then you you were uh, interviewed that. Yeah, yeah, I helped uh, coordinate that, and then uh, Mr. Name and a couple other folks got in it as well. Um, that guy, Sam Brock, is now like one of the weed NBC reporters, so we could probably get a follow-up story on the national ticket at this point. But uh, feel, feel free to direct all media inquiries uh, to professional noise bridge hacker um at 415 900 hoax um that's h o a x or 4629 415 900 hoax your hacker hotline and support service <laughs> good number <laughs> seems It, it's a it's a forwarded it's a it's a bullshit number that forwards to an actual number. Um, Dan's Dan's got an even better one that uh, we're gonna have to set up at some point. I think it's like four one five seven zero seven thirteen thirty seven or something like that. Um, well done. So yeah, anybody else? Uh, I see a toot. Any uh, anybody else want to uh, throw in tonight? So yeah, I think we got most most of the people here, uh, unless Carl. I don't think I, I have Carl, anything. To... All good. I, I don't think I have anything to present, or at least I can't think of anything at the moment. Okay. Oh, we have a toot. We do have a toot. Hello, toot. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> ah, okay. You presented I earlier. I presented the robot, and yes, I just indeed. put my name in. Um, relay. You can also, I think, if you if you want to have, have a chance. Pressure though. Okay. All good. Um, yeah, so, um, yeah, so I guess. Naomi was, it sounds like she has some stuff with her kid um, and won't be around for tonight or the rest of tonight. Um, yeah, people are watching the head. Yeah, um, I think we're, I think we're done. 